Hey everybody. Alright, so we've made a character in Adobe Illustrator. Next step, I'm going to show you how to animate this guy. Just really basic stuff just to get you started. So first of all, let's make a new composition. And I want to use this preset, HDTV 1080 24. So choose that one. All this should look like that. We'll do it for 10 seconds. I think that's the default. Background color, sure. Hit OK. All right. So here's our uh, viewer. This is what the composition looks like so far. And here's our all of our files. We don't have anything yet. So let's import this guy. I put him on. Now, if I just import it, um, this thing comes up, and I can choose. I want to import it as footage or as a composition. So I'm going to do it this way. That way it will keep all the separate layers just in case I want to use them individually. And footage layer size, I think you can choose either one of those. So let's hit OK there. All right. Now I've got this bald guy file and also I've got this folder that has all of the layers on it. So that's cool. So for now I'm just going to take the whole bald guy and drag him in here. And let's click on the corner here to resize him. I'm going to hold shift to keep the same proportions otherwise you know it might get like that. So hold shift when you're resizing. I'm going to make him about like this. I'm going to show you how to make this guy do jumping jacks. All right. So what we need to do is we're going to use a thing called the puppet pin tool and that will kind of distort yeah, I guess distort the character and make his body parts bend. So I'm going to zoom in on him so I can see it a little better. I'm just scrolling in with the mouse. Um and he's selected, right? Here's the layer. Select him. Go up here to my tools and choose Puppet Pin Tool. So basically anywhere that I want a joint that can bend, I'm going to click on to put the, the puppet pin on it. So we'll put one in a, on his head, one in his chest. Um, let's do one at his shoulders and another at his hand. I'll do the same over here, shoulders and hand torso and we'll do the foot here and the foot there. Now I can grab any one of these pins and click and drag it and it'll bend like that. It will even stretch way out like that. Uh, so you can you can do whatever you want with this thing. Uh, I can go over here and click and drag that one. For some reason this hand is going behind his waist and this one is going in front of it. I'm not sure how to decide which one of those happens. Uh, and this one will make his head go back and forth. Notice since I don't have any pins up here, everything that's above that one is going to move with it, which is what I want in this case. Okay, so now I'm going to make him do jumping jacks. So let's start with the right hand. Make sure my timeline uh, play, playback head is at the beginning. And I'm going to push down the, um, the command button. See how it changes my cursor to a little stopwatch? So now when I click and move his arm, see how the playback head is moving and it's doing this weird outline thing? That means it's recording what I'm doing right now. Alright, so I did it until it got to the end, 10 seconds worth. Now if I hit spacebar to play it, there, it remembers what I did. There it is moving. Each one of these dots is what's called a keyframe, meaning with this dot right here, that means at this point in time, the hand will be right here. Or at this point in time, it will be right here. Alright, so let's try and do it with the other hand. Uh, so I want them both to come up and at the same time and then both go down at the same time. I'm going to try to 
match it as best I can. It won't be perfect, but who cares? So again, I'll hold Command, and then I click on it. He's having a hard time doing jumping jacks because his arms are so short, like a baby, right? He can't get his hands over his head to clap, but he does what he can. Okay, so now both arms are doing it. Let's do the, let's see, when you have your arms out, you also have your legs out, right? Okay, so let's do this foot. Okay, and then this leg. This is going to be the weirdest jumping jacks anybody's ever seen. All right, here he goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, there there are ways to be more precise about this, but we're just doing this quick and easy. All right, so he's kind of wiggling. It looks more like he's doing snow angels or something, right? Laying on his back. So let's add some gravity and some jumping to this. So we will not use the puppet pin tool for that because we want the whole body to kind of go up and down as he's jumping. Um, so instead I'm going to click on this. I'm going to drop down this transform menu and this thing that says position. So this is what tells me where he is on the screen with the X and Y coordinates. I'm going to click this stopwatch here. See how it added this little diamond both here and here? So that is a keyframe. So meaning at frame zero zero, he will be right here on the screen. I'm going to sc scroll forward to where his ha hands and legs are fully outstretched. So something like that. I'll put another keyframe there. And then when he lands on the ground, put another one there. And where are they outstretched again? Right about there. And then he lands on the ground. Okay. And does he start out on the ground? Yeah. So I could go through and do that for the whole thing. Instead, I'm going to shorten it. So I'm going to click on the edge of the work area and just shorten that. So now it'll only go for three seconds, but that's fine. Okay. So nothing has moved because every keyframe that I put here is at the exact same position. So it's not changing, but I did that because I wanted to mark each time that he hits the ground. So now I'll go halfway in between these ones, and there's a couple ways I can do this. Either I can go up here and choose the arrow tool and just click on our guy and move him up a little bit. I could move him way up and see how this line stretches? So that's showing how far he's moving and see how it added a new keyframe there. So now it will go from this part to that part like that. And then it's just going to stay there because all these keyframes are the same. So he could be jumping really high. I don't think he should that high. Let's go like that. Okay. And notice how it changed the Y coordinate. Oh, changed both the coordinates a little bit but mostly mostly the y coordinate goes from 708 to 664 okay so now if i wanted him to always jump the same height i could just go over here so go halfway in between the two i could click on this type was that what it was then go in between these click on that and go in here there we go. Now let's go to the beginning and hit space. There he goes. Look at that. Okay. So, kind of slow, it seems like. So let's say we want to speed up the whole thing. Um, what I could do... There's a couple ways you can do this. Either you can right-click on on this layer, right click on it, go time, time stretch, and then you put in, it's basically like the percentage that you want it to stretch, so if I stretch it 50 percent, now it's going to be half as long. So See how it squished everything down? So that's one way to do it. 
Um, or if you just want to adjust some of the, the keyframes, um, these ones I can't select because they're inside this mesh thing. So what I can do is select it and then hit U. And that will show all of the keyframes. Man, that's a ton. I don't want to mess with that. So in this case, yeah, the time stretch will be your best bet. Otherwise, you can try and select all of them. Uh, I didn't get quite all of them. There we go. Select all of them, and then if you hold the Option button and click on the last one, and see how it shrinks them all down, kind of in, you know, respective of each other. Then I could drag this over to. So either one of those methods works. If you've got a ton of keyframes, I'd probably use the time stretch thing. There we go. Okay. Last thing you need to know how to do is how to turn this into a movie so that you can send it to somebody else. So we are going to go File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And that will open it up down here. Yours is probably going to say something like this lossless and that's going to be a huge file that we don't want to mess with so click on this actually click on the word lossless go to format options click on this animation codec and change that to h.264 and then hit OK and hit OK on this and it'll say custom QuickTime. You're going to be doing this a lot, probably. And you don't want to have to go through and do that every time. So let's uh, click on, oops, let's click on the little arrow here, choose Make Template. And then right here, let's just name it H.264 for the setting that we put it. So I've already done this, um, but you're going to hit OK. And then from then on, when you choose this drop down thing, you'll have one of these here. I made mine my default. Yours will be in there somewhere. So choose H.264. Last thing, you'll click here where it says Comp 1 and this is where you want it to you want to save it. So let's put it in Movies and let's call it uh, Jumping Jacks and then hit Save all right, so we've got those. It hasn't done anything yet. Last thing we need to do is go here and click render, and then it'll go through here, and it'll make a little dinging sound for us, and then it's all done. Okay, and then you'll have a nice quick time movie, Jacks. Good job, jumping Jacks guy.